Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mr. Zafar here. This is take 3 and uh, it reminds me of the good times of YouTube. Anyways, I am very sorry that I've not been able to upload a video in such a long time. Uh, I mean, a bunch of stuff has happened in my life. I can't commit to YouTube that much now. I technically, I'm, I technically can't even make a video now. But I managed to get some time and I, I enjoy making videos for you guys. I don't know if you guys enjoy my videos, but I certainly enjoy doing videos for all of you. So. I just keep doing it. It's a hobby as well. Why not? I like this game. You like this game. You get the point. Uh, so I decided to play Master Premium because actually after I finished my Coco deck profile, I had so many other deck profiles I was supposed to do for y'all. I had, a bl I had this deck. I had, what else I had? I, I blast the premium, which surprised me because I didn't even know I had that. And then I even had an updated Narukami deck profile, which I won top eight in the to standard tournament in an oppressive meta that is standard. Which is shocking since I've almost given up on standard. So that's one minute of me talking because the past three takes I've been doing, I keep getting like two to three minutes of set live ranking. So I won't go much into it. I'll go to that now in this video. Today is Blade Master Premium. So as y'all know, standard screwed up. Blade Master can't survive in such a meta. We have too little resource management. The cards used for resource management, Kagiro, Sable, Dragon New, Aramo, they cost like what? A play set of both cards, just eight grade ones, is enough to equal the value of a DP standard deck, which is meh. I mean the die liner build, not even my audience deck. A full die liner build is equal to eight cards in terms of value if you try and buy it. So I, I've kind of given up on standard and it's great, but I probably will just keep playing standard just for Narukami. If not, I am pretty much, I think premium is a bit more fun for older players and for players who actually like this game and don't want to spend too much and have already spent too much. Never mind. Back to this. So this deck includes both Cohen and New Blade Master, as well as all a lot of new cards. Um, I built this deck a long time ago, a long time ago. I just never had a chance to review it. So for those of you who remember, when VBO Seven came out with this new Blade Master, another set came out, and that was the Premium Collection. It gave us Dumjin. Now I am so glad that nobody has exploited Kagiro in Premium to the point that we had Outstrike banned. So thank you to all of you premium Kagiro players who did not exploit this guy because I don't want another OTT situation where a strike straight up gets banned. Like, come on guys. Come on, what do, you, what, what do we do? No, Kagiro is... No, we, as much as people who despise Kagiro the clan for being Overlord, whether you're Blade Master and Overlord main, let's try not to get anything banned, okay? I don't want Ziegenberg gonna ban this next month. Or next year, I don't know, whenever Bushiro decides to do this again. Alright, so Blade Master Cohen, we play 4. Blade Master, uh, Cohen's ability, Color Blast 1, when your G unit strike, oh, I've not said in a long time, strike, uh, retire one of your opponent's rear guards, choose a Blaze unit, oh, I've not said that in a long time, give it plus 3. So it's a relatively straightforward ability. Um, you don't really use the retire ability a lot. We kind of use it for the second ability, and that is at the end of, your, at the end of a turn. If your opponent has no rear guards, choose a great true, great tree with Blaze, and add it to your hand. Now, this deck only plays Cohen as the only great tree blaze. So, if I'm to rewrite this wording for you, it is just choose a Blade Master Cohen bounce. Um, this has, of course, consistency issues is not as good as with the last time where we used to have so many great tree blaze and then it was like fun. But we have to make way for standard stuff like Blade Master because that thing's good too, and I will explain that why. Uh, so, this guy is literally the main of this deck, and he helps with internet strike loop. He's once in a while burning, and he's Blade Master, so we take him at four. We also play for the standard Blade Master. Yes, that's right, standard Blade Master. Now, as much as I enjoy the standard Blade Master, he is relatively wonky. Uh, in the in the in the way that he his his ability is really like a one turn push. I didn't use the word kill. It's a one turn push, not a one turn kill. It's not guaranteed to win. It has very high uh, stakes, as in the, the requirements to pull it off, and when you pull it off, the amount of risks involved, and the rigidity of Blade Master, stand, uh, the, the standard one, uh, makes it really hard for it to survive in a meta where fishy ladies and shadow people on shadow horses make it really hard to survive, especially when they splash hell lots of money. As a standard, not going to that one. Uh, so yeah, Blade Master can't survive, will not survive, shall not survive because unless you have, like I said, a lot of money for Aramon, Sable, Dragon, you go ahead. But if not, you should be questioning yourself. 
Why am I spending that money? I could build a better standard there. Never mind. You get the idea. So Blade Master sta- uh, Blade Master sta- I'm gonna call it Blade Master Standard from now on. Blade Master Standard's ability is when you have no rear guards, when your opponent has no rear guards, gain 5k crit. Now I like to mention something about both Blade Masters first. The infinite strike loop ability that allows you to take back a great tree with blades. And this ability for the 5k and extra crit is kind of like a continuous ability. I know Bushiroad doesn't really print a lot of cards that have a, that have cut that have you interact with your opponent's cards during their turn besides G cards. They don't really do a lot of that. But Blade Masters, it, both of them, are relatively unique because they both can do that. If your opponent ends his turn with no rear guards, you get a free grade 3. It must be another Cohen. And if your opponent has no rear guards for the standard one, you get 5k crit. Not just on your turn, but on his turn. So you can turn this 5k into crit defensively because Blade Master by nature is a very oppressive deck. So if you keep killing off their rear guards, the chances are they won't have a lot of rear guards to recover. They don't have infinite rear guards unless they're tokens. So for you, what you can do is when you keep sweeping away the rear guards, they have to start making a conscious choice. Do you want to commit to board or commit to their hand to block your attacks? And either way they do it, you're gonna be keep applying the right amount of pressure and slowly win the game. Blade Master's a very slow deck, as with most premium decks if we build them correctly. Um, there, there is an element of rush, and I will be showing you how you rush them, but if not, this is the way to go. You slowly just kill them off. The second part of Blade Master, which makes him really wonky, is this one. Soul Blast a great tree. Drop two cards from your hand. If you have both Garan and Doha, which I'll get to them in a bit, all right, on your rear guards, destroy all of your opponent's rear guards, ooh, and summon his stand, Vision. Now, uh, I will get to the rigidity of Blade Master later when I talk about the Vision token, but basically, uh, good effect, not a great effect, can't win all games and situational. I mean, because we're playing premium, we are open to the entire G zone. So, and the G zone is, I'm gonna be honest with you, a lot more effective than this skill. So, honestly, you don't really use this skill unless you are certain for a fact you can kill him off and or you can't strike. Second thing I'd like to mention is this guy's force. Uh, it's a very small detail, but markers in premium go a long way. So, I'm just here to remind you this guy has force. Come on, I mean, I mean, if you force Ziegenberg, man, that's good. For Doha, trade this guy, whom I seriously don't remember his name, and trade this guy, who I also have forgotten his name. Oh, this is a lot faster than take three. Okay, never mind, take two, never mind. Doha's skill is, when placed from hand, I mean, where else are you going to place it from? Uh, count plus one, call Garan. This is by far amazing like i know i don't really am not a big fan of the standard stuff on blade master but this is just great the other clan that has this kind of thing is what akane and bedavir for royal paladin you don't really get column fillers for kagiro or if not any other clan outside royal i mean shadow has a bit i don't know let me know so this is a brand new for Kagiro, and this is a must add for Blade Master because he specifically writes them on this skill as well. I mean, you don't have much of a choice unless you want to play the PTO one vanillas. In that case, this is much better. Uh, but anyways, that column fill ability is really good. In addition, because you're playing premium, you're not forced to hold all your resources for that one turn drive with the standard Blade Master. You can use this for early game rush. I mean. Bedovian Akanis are constantly used to build their board fast and to kick the opponent down as fast as possible. You can do the same with Doha. Now available and uh, no, I'm just kidding. So the second skill is uh, when he attacks, uh, if your opponent has no rear guards, he cannot normal call normal unit cards from hand. All right? He cannot call normal cards normally from hand. That means he can't call grade 1, he can't call grade 2, he can't call great trick. Even if it's die liner, no, not happening. The only ways you block him is with great zeros, G guards, because we're in premium, and intercept. But that should not be the case because he should not have rear guards. So intercept, no. But if not, he should only have great zeros and great force to block this attack with. Of course, it's not much of a threat, but it does apply some pressure. Put a force marker and a good 
amount of power on him, and yeah, there you go. This is another card that makes Blade Master extremely oppressive. His skill is Count Last One. If your Vanguard's Blade Master, which it should be, draw a card and gain plus 2k for every open rearguard. Uh, on normal circumstances, if you're following this deck profile and how Blade Master works properly, you're looking at a plus 10k boost. Uh, if not, if you played Excel, you gain plus 2 as well for. Oops, my hand. You gain plus 2 as well for every additional Excel circle. That means every time he writes a great tree, if it's got a marker, you gain additional plus 2 for your effects. This is one of the main draw engines for Blade Master from, I don't know, 2017 till now. And he's probably one of the only Blade Master staples that I'll ever recommend for anybody playing Blade Master. This is a must have in all decks for Blade Master. The other card that I've added, and I'll remove these guys, he's from VBO7. And I'll be honest with you, I've been playing this game since BTO1, and this man is by far the best common in all of Vanguard history, to my knowledge. Like, come on, literally, this guy is the best, and I will explain why. Count Blast 2, Soul Blast 1 card. Retire two of your opponent's rear guards and gain plus 5k. This guy is of, of, of this guy is one of the only other ways to retire rear guards for Blade Master besides your strike units and your Vanguard. Uh, he helps put down early game rushes insanely. Like if your opponent's playing one of those filthy decks that rush, put this guy down, kill him all off. I mean it's rush, right? So he's bound to have given you at least two damage. If not, it's not called a rush. Kill two of your rear, opponent's rear guards. Calm blast two seems quite expensive, but this is Kagyu Premium and this is Blade Master. Resource management is something we work with and we do well with. Uh and of course the plus five K is just a little not of power. But other than that, he puts down Excel decks completely. Like, you don't even have to worry. If you know you're playing an Excel player, or if you don't know what you play against, just mull to make sure you have this guy in your hand. Even during the late game, he has its benefits. Like, if you happen to be at Ziegenberg, oopsie, and you want to save resources for a almost guaranteed win, you wouldn't want to flip Ziegenberg because we only play two in this deck. I'm poor. But then you would just use him. For the retirement and there you go so very good way to play regards good for early game it's good for late game must put i mean there are other cards you could put but i think he's one of the most efficient and also budget friendly by far great ones garan garan skill is if your opponent has no rear guards he gains an extra 5k he's a constant 13k booster i think we'll take him and he's also trained by doha so you know why not Second part is, after he boosts a successful attack from Garan, counter blast 1, draw a card, soul charge 1. Uh, Kagiro doesn't need a lot of soul, so um, you're not going to be using the skill a lot, unless you really need that draw. And even if the attack hits most of the time, I don't think I'll actually use the skill. I, I mean it's up to you if you edit your premium decks that you need soul or whatever decks you're playing that needs soul. But I don't think this build needs soul or Kagiro in general, so you don't really need to use this effect a lot. But I mean, yeah. For the draw, I guess, if you really want that draw. Mambus from VBO7. When he boosts, if your opponent has no rear guards, he needs two or more cards to block the boosted attack. Uh, this is mini battle door fighter for Kagero. Uh, yeah, pretty good. I mean, he fits in with the Blade Master strategy pretty well. No rear guards, you know. He helps out with that part, so. Yeah, we only playing 3 because you need the other cards for resource management and whatnot. But other than that, this guy. Once you've, once you've oppressively keep pushing your opponent down, he becomes very good. Uh, this is another one of the, those rare Blade Master staples. Once per turn, when your Vanguard attacks, if it's Blade Master, and if he retired one of a uh, rearguard this turn, that means, uh, that means either from the Stride ability or one of the one of the G cards ability. That means one of the great great force abilities. Counter charge one. Give this card plus four k. This is one of the ways you consistently counter charge. And it's good because, oops, yeah, trying to avoid that. 
sorry, still the same bad camera. So you can consistently counter charge if you consistently burn his rear guards, and that's pretty good. And he just needs to be on board, and you can stack this counter charge effect once per turn. Of course, you can't for every one retired counter charge one that will be overpowered. But as long as at a turn you kill somebody, you still get a counter charge, and the plus four k makes it an eleven k booster. So yeah, why not? Uh, we play two strike fodder because you don't need. Once you get Cohen, you don't really have to worry about striding. But sometimes you still need. I mean, we only play eight grade trees, so it's not a very safe amount for a strike based deck. We play two strike fodder, and there's also a really cool ass trick which I don't mind teaching y'all. Uh, discard a Cohen, add a grade tree to your hand, maybe another Cohen, and yeah. Because once you discard him, even though you have this guy's rear guard and him in the drop zone, as long as you strike again and you pull off the condition to kill our rear guards, you get this back straight away. And just like that, you'll have a Cohen in your hand and a Cohen Vanguard. So, just, just a cheap little trick that I use for this guy that I just wanted to share. Well, of course, it's not a winning strategy, but good tips should be shared. Two of him. Uh... If let's say you don't kill any rear guards, or let's just say you need counter charge, use him. At the end of the turn, retire him. Alright? Uh, if your opponent has no rear guards, counter charge, and then you uh, and then you draw a card. Yeah, if three or more cards for it. I, I can't let me check this guy out. I just know that you can draw a card and uh, counter charge. Yeah. Let me just check. I'm not playing this game very long. Uh -huh. Give me. I just want to be sure I'm telling you all the right info. You know, we don't want a situation where I teach you all the wrong thing. His name is Dragon Mong Shinsen. Alright, retire this unit. If your opponent has no rear guards, counter charge. If you have three or more, draw a card. Which is easy. I mean, one plus one is two. Plus literally something else, three. So easy condition to pull off. Just yeah. If you have three more rear guards, draw. If your opponent has no rear guards, counter charge. Relatively simple and good effect. The last great one is Demonic Dragon Mage Timnara. My favorite great one from OG. Now he's back. Uh I'm only playing one of him. Uh and I'll explain why. His skill is counter blast one, put him in the soul. Soul again. Alright, choose three of your opponent's rear guards. Retire all of his other rear guards except those three. So this is good because this helps you majorly cut down that troublesome board. So let's say you know let's say you know he has like seven rear guards, I don't know, six yeah. Let's say you have Excel. So you can just choose three rear guards, the rest die. And the very important keyword is choose. If your opponent has resist rear guards, they don't count. Like if let's say his entire board is resist, then this card becomes destroy the board, which is overpowered. If not, resist units, just choose everything that's not resist, kill off everybody else, then you know the rest of the normal units poke them off with the regular burn strategy. This is more of a tech, tech, tech in card just against resist or against extremely wide boards. Um, if let's say your opponent just for some strange reason manages to overpower you with say 7 rear guards in one turn, even though you consistently keep burning your opponent's rear guards, then this is the card to turn the tide back for your favour. You just need one of him, I mean you could play two, but if not, one will do the trick. Next up for great zeros, for crit. To draw, to stand. Sorry, six draw, and then four heal. Um, the four crit, mm, pretty self-explanatory. The two stand, well, because stand triggers can be used in premium. So yeah, why not let's play stand? And also because you can shuffle them back to the deck, and counter charge. And I think you can draw a card. Yeah, you can. Let me check this out. So sorry. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can counter charge. Let me just check this one more time. 
I should have done my research before the lift up because I was sweating. No, just counter charge one, choose one of your Okay, when when the attack of your unit with a blaze ability hits, if your vanguards in blaze state, counter charge one, choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. I mean you should have all rear guards killed by now. So you don't really want to gamble on the on hit. But what I am more willing to put my money on is the counter charge. So yeah, I mean you could if you let's say your opponent has one more rear guard left, just just burn off the last one. So yeah. But it has to have the blaze ability. So that's what this guy is for. Um uh, for draw PG, Bari. Yes. I like Bari. Bari's good. Alright. Another two draw because this is a deck that needs draw. So draw. And then for heal. We're using this heal uh, for a very special friend I call Denial Griffin. So yeah, I will get to that in just a bit. Basically is buying two copies of this. When you use one of this card for the effects of a strip for of a G guard calling, um, pay the cost, counter charge one or soul charge one. Mainly we use this for the counter charge effect because Denial Griffin requires a counter blast or your other G guard. Uh, I'll get to that in just a bit. And now for the long awaiting strikes, I will go through this quickly. One Drachma. Uh, I like flexing, uh, spell of money yo. Uh, this card not really used a lot, just flashy as finisher. Uh, yeah, it's really not really used a lot. This guy, the GB8, also not used a lot. You should have killed him by then. Uh, so those guys out of the way. Ziegenberg, consistent mid-range finisher within your second to third strike. Uh, the first ability is uh, Soul Blast 1, flip a copy of him, retire an opponent's rear guard. Uh, so expensive, no, don't use it. Uh, the, sec the last ability is what we're here for though, Car Blast 1, discard as many cards as you have uh, opponent rear guards, stand this unit, drive minus 2. And now you understand why I said that this force marker was important. So, Ziegenberg, well, is a restander, as y'all could probably tell, and uh, yeah, if, you have no if your opponent has no rear guards, which you shouldn't be constantly maintaining, it's a almost free restand just counter blast one is simple effective card um because i spent a lot of money this in the past but also because i think it's quite good for titan of course if you would like to spend your money on other strikes go ahead i ain't stopping you uh blade master titan counter blast one flip a titan uh as many titans as you have fit oh no counter blast one flip anybody should be Titan. For every Titan you have face up in the G zone, retire an opponent's rear guard. And Blaze, excuse me, Blaze, the guy goes crit. Uh, first of all, this guy is an all-rounder. It's a very simple all-rounder. He kills off rear guards. I mean, he kills off one, that's fine. On the second strike, he kills off three. So if your opponent tries to push, yeet, there the board goes. It just dies. Uh, and the crit, I mean, even if you don't even use the burn ability, to gain that crit is important because um, this is like I said, Blade Master is an oppressive deck. Every additional pressure you build on counts. And crits are not easily gained. I mean, you have this guy, and that's it. No other card in this deck gains crits except him. And sometimes crits are important, as y'all would probably know by now with the introduction of Force 2. So sometimes you just want your attack critical. Just use it. Uh, next one, this guy, he has been the first strike of Blade Master for about two years now. Man, I'm old. Counter Blast one, flip a, a card in the G zone, retire one of your opponent's rear guards, and oh no, sorry, flip one of your G guards, G cards up from the G zone, and then when he attacks, if he is blazing, retire one of your opponent's rear guards and draw a card. That was the effect. Um, there are two other cards that share similar effects for first strikes. You don't always have to use him. Use this guy from the legend deck. Vortex Desire, flip one. When this attack hits, burn two of, burn a column of your opponent. That's right, a column. So that means that you choose one of the rear guards and everyone in that column dies. So even if there's a resist unit in that column, just choose the other guy, they all go. 
Lastly, the boy that has hyped up this deck enough for me to build a profile on it, Dumjit Valor. Only one Valor. Uh, I will explain. <laughs> Dumjit Valor is good, but not good enough for me. It has some serious consistency issues, and while its effect is good, I dare say there are other stronger cards. Of course, if you like the effect of Dumjit, or if you feel Dumjit, your opinion is stronger, play more Dumjits by all means. But for me, let me explain. Dumjit Valor, Counter Blast 1, flip a card in the G zone, alright? Uh, choose one of your opponent's rear guards, retire it. And for every Sentinel, that means for our case, for every Wyvern guard Bury, in our drop zone, that's right, our drop zone, this guy gets 15k. Uh, usually nowadays, I don't even use him as a first strike. Uh, but I'll get to that time. I mean, yeah, plus 15 is good for every Sentinel, but that is if you do play the Sentinel. What happens if in a game you only get, say, one Sentinel? I mean, this kind of thing exists. Rush decks exist. What if you only get one Sentinel? What if you get none? You don't get this power boost. The second part is just once per turn. When your opponent G guards, you know, G guard, you know, G guard, or Sentinel, that means PG, stand him. If he's in blazing, he gets drive minus one. Uh, this may sound good, and it is good, but let me explain. <sighs> Dumjit Velor only gets the restanding ability as long as your opponent G guards or if he just sentinels it. If he doesn't do any of these two, if he eats the attack or let's just say he blocks it by other means, you don't get this restanding ability. Sure, on hindsight, if you play Dumjit Velor, you kind of say if you do PG or G guard, you will be punished with a restanding Dumjit. And that is a, rel a relatively good effect. But if you think about it, it won't mean much to him if he can just block you by other means or eat this attack this turn. And then next turn, just block it again. Even if you play more than one dumb jit, you do it again next turn, eventually he will still outblock you in a way. And you don't really get the restanding effect a lot. You get a 15k only if you play a lot of Sentinels and you have four. So this is not a good first try. It couldn't be a finisher. But Kagiro has way more better finishers like dumb, dumb like, you know, Ziegenberg, I feel, is a much more consistent finisher as well as, I mean, even for this aspect, Drachma would be a little bit more of a safer finisher. In a case where any card can become a finisher, you're not picking Dumjit. Dumjit is at best a good second to third strike. He could be a first strike if you have already Sentinels, but if not, no. Uh, and like I said, the 15k boost doesn't happen a lot. So he's not as great as people say he is. I'm just gonna put it out there. But of course, if you think Dumjit Valor is a good card, which I'm not lying, it is a good card in most situations, play more of him. But if you're seeking something a bit more consistent, you can play other cards. And besides, Dumjit Velo at most only retires one rear guard, which can be a bit dangerous if you, know, you need more retirement at a certain point in time. This is not the right card for you to retire and gain uh, adequate pressure on the same turn. Last up for the G guards, we have Denial Griffin at 3. The attacking unit instantly dies as long as it's a rear guard. You don't have to worry, even if it's 9999 attack power or whatever it is. Count last one, it dies. It straight out dies. The only problem is if it has resist, so be careful of that. This card is built for anti Vanguard attacks. Count last one. When a Vanguard battles a Vanguard, only in this case, you put this guy down, he gets 10k shield for every open rear guard. If you are consistently applied pressure, you are looking at 60 plus shield. But that's not likely to be the case. Maybe 20k shield or even 10k shield. Then, I mean, it's still good at 25 or even a 35k block. But if you've been consistently applying pressure, but your opponent still cooks up such a large attack, the chances are he doesn't have a lot of rear guards left, so this becomes a safe enough block. And under 30 minutes, I have... Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I haven't talked about Blade Master Standard. 
force markers. Just use force one and vision. You you just need to play one. Uh, yeah. I think I'll probably talk about the the the, the clunkiness of Blade Master standard another time. Or maybe yeah, maybe I should just do it now. Okay. So Blade Master Vision is a great tree that is summoned only by the standard Blade Master. It has twin drive. Ooh, that's good. But the problem with this is if like I said, it's not a it's not a confirmed kill strategy because if you are pulling off this condition, your board will look something like this. Yes, ignore the camera. Your board looks something like this. Uh, give or take maybe one of this. No, maybe one of this. Your board looks something like this. Uh you definitely would have a force marker. Or two but this is all you have and I know this looks strong but in premium this is very easily dead yeah this this is an easily blockable field uh, and, it's, and it's standard as well I mean there's no PG restriction the Doha tank you can easily eat it if your opponent knows you are trying to use this strategy more often than not he's going to play around it because this is a easily countable strategy just eat one attack block the two critical ones or one critical one and you're fairly good to go even though you have a total of four drives it's not very scary if your opponent can easily block it which let's face it he most probably can Oopsie. yes so that is why i converted this deck to premium because we open it up to a lot more choices Premium is one, personally, in my opinion, more fun to play. But secondly, of course, it's a lot more consistent. You don't have to spend too much money, and it's still fun. I mean, of course, if you still wish to play the, uh, Blade Master and Standard, and you happen to have those resource management cards, go ahead. But Standard is a matter of weird proportions, so don't blame me if your deck never wins that much. If not, I thoroughly enjoy doing this bad deck profile. I've been wanting to do this for so long. Thank you for staying for the end of till this video i know this is very long uh i would like i said i will try to do some more deck profiles but if not you can expect to see more of me in october but if not i have to go under the radar for a while more but thank you all to my newer subscribers especially i've got a lot recently thank you all for all your overwhelming support i really appreciate it thank you so much for uh, watching till the end of this video if you like it please leave a like Subscribe, make my sub count jump from 59 to 69. Nice. I'll be the most ledge Vanguard YouTuber ever. Never mind, I still like the others. The others are better. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next time.